The Florida Keys are a strip of intricately interconnected islands that extend roughly 120 miles off of the coast of the United States. Of those 120 miles, 113 of them are physically linked via the Overseas Highway, which starts near Florida City and extends all the way down to Key West. It is here on this idyllic island that you'll be greeted with gorgeous beachfronts, lavish resorts, five-star restaurants, top-notch shopping, and an amazing nightlife. Additionally, this is where you'll find the Fort East Martello Museum. As you've probably already guessed by its name, the museum started off life as a military fortification. Back in 1860, tensions that eventually led to the Civil War began flaring across the United States. In response to this, the stronghold was constructed by the Union for the purpose of fending off the ever-growing threat of the Confederacy. Thankfully, however, the fort never saw any actual conflict and was ultimately abandoned. Fast forward to 1950, the structure was resurrected by volunteers and turned into the island's first museum, where it still stands today. Inside, you'll find all kinds of historical exhibits that range from showcasing the area's Cuban artistic influences to displays that educate visitors on the military history of the area. Additionally, it also serves as the home of a three-foot doll named Robert. At first glance, Robert looks quite ordinary, with a dash of uncanny value mixed in, and he does look a bit out of place. He's a raggedy doll in a sailor uniform, and he has in his arms his beloved stuffed dog. Both figures reside in a dedicated glass case and are always present to greet the many visitors who come to view them every year. However, there is nothing friendly about the greetings that they offer. I mean, after all, what else would you expect from a doll that is possessed by a demon? everyone and welcome back to the you go first podcast this is our new podcast that will cover all kinds of spooky happenings here we'll talk about haunted history urban legends and just the overall unexplained my name is austin and i am joined here unfortunately once again with fernando <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? It's, good to be, it's, it's good to be back austin <laughs> i gotta say it's good to be out of a uh, content jail that you kept me in dude well you know i'm sorry you do the crime you have to pay the time <laughs> exactly dude so How dare uh, I be myself? <laughs> I know. Well, that's the problem. Everyone knows you have to be someone else on the internet. You you deviated from what I told you you could do. I gave I you a set that. list of things you could say, and you didn't follow it. And just I'm remember. sorry, the script had it was riddled <laughs> with typos, dude. So uh, before we uh, get started on our topic for today. I thought it'd be interesting to uh, note that apparently um, a satanic temple in Salem, Massachusetts was attacked over uh, the week. Someone threw a pipe bomb at the front door. How did I not hear didn't about go this? Off. I don't know how, how you didn't hear about it. I you... like live in the area. How do you, how did you hear about this? <laughs> uh, my sister, apparently. And then I looked it up on the news. Yeah. So someone <laughs> threw a pipe bomb. Uh, thankfully didn't go off no one got hurt there was like minor property damage because the uh you know i forgot to mention this in the past podcast but i kind of wanted to like i remember i think it was in iowa and it's a little bit political like right i think there was originally like a law to keep church and state separate but like yeah, in iowa was, i think but in iowa for some reason like, i think i think uh because it's like i forgot what it fell under it might have been freedom of speech or something I'd have to look into it, but I just remember vaguely that, like, I think they had a nativity scene for Christmas or whatever. Uh huh. And, like, the Church of Satan, I know there's two, right? Like, I think there's an actual Church of Satan, and then there's one that say they are, but it's really just like to fight, like, political uh, biases. They're and they set like up each other either. <laughs> yeah. Well, they set up, like, a goat head, like, statue of, like, doing the Satan's pose and something in the Capitol building where the nativity scene is. And they couldn't take it down because they had the nativity, which is like a Christian thing. And it's just like, it was just kind of like, oh, well, legally, we can't do anything about it. I mean, it's a religion. You're allowed to do what you want to do. As long as no one's getting hurt, you can, you and can do it. That's where pipe palms come <laughs> come into play, man. The well, fact yeah, that, well, that's that is hurting people. And that's not OK. And that's what I'm saying. Like, <clears throat> so we're the like, there's supposed to be freedom of speech or whatever. And it's just it doesn't always go. It feels very one-sided freedom of speech. Well, yeah, it's freedom of speech until the wrong people don't like what you're saying. But so, yeah, there's your bit of history, your current events uh -oh. for the day. 
What do you, <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, I, I'm in Discord. Hey, Key, what's up? We're recording a podcast right now. I forgot to, <laughs> I forgot to, I forgot to dip from this. So those are our current events for the day, Oops. and we all survived. We all survived the eclipse. No one died, not that I know of. Did you see the in the United States? There was a rise of Google searches of eyes hurt after the eclipse. Yeah, because no one was wearing either. No one was wearing glasses, or they went to Dollar Tree and bought a pair of like solar protection. Also, glasses. I just think in this day and age, there's so much misinformation and so much anti-science going around. And I won't get into more politics here, but people are just like, I can look at it. It's like <laughs> big science is lying to me. And then, those like, glasses are hiding the aliens. If we exactly. don't have the glasses on, we can <laughs> see them. <laughs> It's just, it's so funny, man, <laughs> that we live in an age where people are, they're like, you know what? I don't believe you. <laughs> I'm going to look at the sun. Everything you say, I will is not a believe. lie. <laughs> it's good to have some skepticism, but be healthy skepticism. But where's the line drawn where healthy skepticism happens and becomes unhealthy? I think when you go <laughs> partially blind from staring at the sun, there's there was a line that you probably crossed a while ago. <laughs> Fair enough. It's nitpicking though. It is. I didn't get to see it though. I didn't I didn't go out looking for glasses. Also, I'm a I was paranoid that the glasses wouldn't work, so I was like, let's just watch it from TV. And we did. And you know what? They covered from places I used to live. So they were covering well, Burlington. I think uh the place I used to live in Texas. And not where I lived, but where you used to live, Tupper Lake. Like so NASA had all these like installations and like broadcast teams and cameras from these areas because that's where the totality was it was really mm -hmm. cool really cool to see oh see so when you saw Tupper lake you actually i thought you looked it up i didn't realize it just no. popped up oh that's yeah cool. no i didn't know like that. nasa was doing a live stream and had all the cameras from all these places totality was gonna hit they only showed you what they wanted you to say exactly dude it was all <laughs> done in a studio in hollywood <laughs> just like the moon landing yeah exactly you're gonna get us canceled. Just like uh, yeah, that. You, you should cut. You should cut this. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, so after that interview, our interview uh, intro. Do you know anything about Robert the Doll? Do you do you know anything at all? Honestly, when you gave me the prep for this, this is when I first started looking into it, and then it kind of just. I had never heard of Robert the Doll. I thought it was gonna just be like Walmart or like a knockoff version of Annabelle the Doll, mm. which, funny enough. When looking into this, I saw that uh, it has its own set of movies, and it kind of does seem like <laughs> Annabelle, because essentially it has like six origin movies, just like Annabelle did, and it's also kind of like a raggedy doll, and the movies are like Robert the Doll, The Toy Maker, Revenge of Robert <laughs> the Doll, Robert Reborn, <laughs> just like, and it just reminds me of Annabelle, because there's like Annabelle Creation, Annabelle Origins, Annabelle, like, like it's just so funny that like, they probably like I had never heard of these movies until looking up this doll. So it's like they must be like big horror movies over in the UK or something. Which is hilarious because it doesn't take place in the UK. It takes place in Florida. It, isn't that funny? I love it. All right. Well, to be honest, I I did know a few things about Robert um, the doll, and that's why. I was like, how did you find this. out about it? I heard about like, him a long, cause, long because you chose ago. this topic, right? You chose yeah, this yeah, topic. I no, I heard about him a long time ago. You know, scrolling through YouTube, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first time I heard about it was I think there's a channel called like the infographics show or something like that. And they show yeah. like cute little cartoons, but they explain like everything from really easygoing topics to really difficult and hard to explain topics that get kind of heavy. Yeah. And then I just, you know, researched more and thought it was cool. And that was before we ever had any kind of podcast or YouTube videos or anything like that. So I figured it would, uh, Align nicely I love with this. I love urban legends, so this is perfect. I'm glad we're doing this podcast. This is going to be fun. Well, that's good because you get to start. You get to start. Okay. You get to start reading this beautiful let's, script. Let's get into this, then, shall we? The case of Robert the Doll. <clears throat> Here's the story. Robert the Doll's origin started in 1904 at a toy store in a small town in Germany. At this time, a man by the name of Thomas Otto was visiting the area in search of a present to bring back home to his son. Robert Eugene Otto, or Eugene, as he preferred to be called. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm the same, right? I'm like, I'm a junior, technically, almost. But it's like, I don't want to be called by my dad's name. That's my dad. Call me, I call didn't me actually whatever. Know you were a junior. <laughs> technically, I'm not, because like our, our, our names are, like our middle name is one letter difference, but it's essentially junior. While walking around the shopping district in Germany, he stumbled upon a life-size doll while walking past a store. And inside, the unclothed doll was perched upon a chair with a small stuffed dog on its lap. 
Believing that this rather plain dummy was the perfect gift for his grandchild, Thomas quickly snatched up the doll and its fluffy companion. You gotta I want to know. You gotta get the look, combo, dude. Like, who looks at this thing and decides, uh, yes, that is the perfect toy for my grandson? This thing has <laughs> Uncanny Valley written all over it. It's terrifying. You know, I had to look at what Uncanny Valley was because I'm like, what is this? <laughs> like, what is this that you're talking about? And I guess it's a doll making like method or something. It's like a so. So the Uncanny Valley, it's actually more of like a sensation that we feel. Um, It's kind of hard to explain, but essentially, like, if you're looking at like a robot or a doll or a spooky skeleton in the background, you know. The fact that you have that there is so weird. (laughs) You know, we like Halloween. Anyways, um, so basically there's a point where you reach where things are okay. Like, there's a point where a robot or one of the things that is described is cute you know it's okay it's not it's human like but it's not too close to being a human however there is a point it differs a little for everyone but once you reach a certain line and it looks too much like a person but not enough like a person and it looks wrong we don't like it humans do not like it uh like for example uh when shrek came out like the first shrek princess fiona when she was a person was actually supposed to look a lot more realistic it's like has... Zootopia. What do they call it when like the animals look human, anthropomorphic, or yeah, something? Yeah, that's different though. You know that Judy Hopps doesn't look like a person. She's a cute, fluffy bunny. It's, but... Hey, stop! Chill with it. <laughs> <laughs> but not today, dude. Anyways, <laughs> another podcast. When they showed Fiona to test audience, but test audiences specifically children, they <laughs> actually started crying because she looked so scary. Because as she the looked... ogre or as the human? As the human. So have you ever seen like? The Polar Express. Oh God, dude! You mean I, okay? I watched it the first time this Christmas after you told me you'd never. So you, you, l- little background. Austin's like the stepdad that always <laughs> overpromised and underdelivered. So he's like, "Yeah, son, we'll watch Polar Express this Christmas." Like five years in a row, right? Never watched it with me. Same thing with like, I'll take you skiing, I'll take you, I'll play catch with you, like all of that. Half. <laughs> so I watched it for my first, the first time this year, and. It was cool, but there's this one little shit in that movie. Yeah, the geek? <laughs> and he's just so <laughs> annoying. Yeah, that's the point. And it's just like, why Why would they put him in here? <laughs> he's an extremely unlikable character. And how does he get to go meet Santa, dude? That's not, like, what? He's not he a good taught, boy. He gets taught a lesson, remember? He's like, lead. And he's like, no, weed. <laughs> but anyways. So um, is that what Fiona looked like? Those guys from Polar Express? Yeah, basically. She was just creepy. The creepiest thing about Uncanny Valley, though, is scientists actually don't know entirely why we ins- we feel it. Most of them agree on the fact that we feel that way to protect us from things that may look human, but aren't. But what in nature looks like a human and isn't? Why would that be an evolutionary trait that we develop if there's nothing in nature that looks like a person? Maybe just the, the from all the horror movies humanity is consumed, we get we have that like subconscious fear. No, this has existed. For a long time really? before before movies ever were a thing so was sasquatch real wendigos Are, wendigos aliens could be dude i mean um, there's a lot of unknown out there i do believe in aliens though. to be fair though a lot of scientists actually have settled on a less creepy idea and it's that when we were i, I mean call it coexisting with <laughs> neanderthals we needed to be able to differentiate between humans and neanderthals it's just a theory I, yeah i mean also I mean, humanity is weird, dude. Like, they used to think manatees were mermaids. <laughs> <laughs> They're not? <laughs> I mean, I, I guess you go so long without seeing a human stuff starts to look human enough. They're like, you know, <laughs> right, maybe maybe that, that manatee's got a mamussy. <laughs> I mean, you know, they haven't seen a woman in like eight months. <laughs> so... All right, I think we got a little off topic. <laughs> I think, I, okay, you know, back to, back to Robert the Doll in Uncanny Valley. <clears throat> Soon after the toy was purchased, Thomas flew back to Key West, Florida, where his family's estate was located. The estate, currently or used to be located at 534 Eaton Street, was a Queen Anne-style home that featured 15 rooms. That's too many. That's too many. Like, too many rooms to check at night when you're going to bed. It's like, dude, like, I lived in a... Sorry to get off topic. I lived in a little old house growing up that had, like... Like, it was, like, three stories from the 1800s and had, like, too many rooms. Creepy. Too creepy. Too, too much space. So it had 15 rooms. It had an octagonal turret, multiple verandas, and an overall aura of lavishness. 
Uh, as you might have guessed, the Ottos were quite wealthy and a well-known socialites in the area. Shortly after arriving back home, Thomas gifted the doll and its canine sidekick to Eugene for his eighth birthday. And almost immediately upon receiving the toy, Eugene became so enamored with it and grew quite attached. Eugene decided that his new best friend would be named Robert, likely after his own name. Or maybe his dad. Wait, wasn't his dad named Robert? No, his his father's name was Thomas. But from right, from all reports I've read, his grandfather's name was Thomas. And it's gone back and forth between who gave him the doll. I've heard reports where his grandfather, Thomas, mm-hmm. and his father, Thomas. Um, for the sake of argument, I just settled on it's his father. But to be honest, there's different reports saying both. Point is, there's a Thomas reports, in there. You know what? There's a Thomas in there. Okay. Saying that Robert was important to Eugene would be an understatement. Prior to Robert's arrival, Eugene was described as being rather aloof as a child and tended to stick to himself. He was a loner. And additionally, there weren't many children around his age in the area. So he often found himself occupying his time on his own. And for these reasons, Robert seemed like a godsend to Eugene and his parents, who were increasingly growing a little worried about Eugene's social development. It sounds like my childhood. <laughs> were you given a doll? No, but my, <laughs> my parents were like very like concerned about my social development, I think, especially when it came to like... <laughs> Anyway, so, so you weren't given one of the dolls we talked about in our last episode. I was given giraffes. Oh, okay. I that's didn't like good. it. It was like cute at first, but then it got like a little overbearing. Like I was like a college kid already, like a little socially developed, and they're still giving like, like it became a gag whenever I came home. And there's like be a giraffe waiting for me, and I do have a ghost story about a little giraffe doll. <laughs> yeah, I like, know this one. It was this little beanie baby, right? Like I, I can't. I had to find a photo. I'll, I'll send it to you, and you can put it in post. But. I was home alone with my parents and my parents were downstairs watching a movie. I was on the third floor or whatever. And there's this little beanie baby. And I just, I, I remember it looked creepy. So I just, I, gra- I got it. I tossed it to the floor because it was sitting on my bed. I go downstairs to watch a movie with my parents and they fall asleep on the couch while watching the movie. I go back upstairs and the damn thing is back where I had, had like, it was back on the bed where I had thrown it from. No one else was in the house. And I still maintain to this day that that 18 18- 50s house or whatever was haunted as hell because like so many creepy stuff like stuff like vacuums turned on in the middle of the night lights turned on by themselves like just i don't ever want to go back i'm glad we don't own it anymore it's we have the ghost someone else's to clean your house you know actually all i get out of that is that the ghost is trying to clean your house not that ghosts are real because they're not um anyways I mean, they uh, are you know it turned <laughs> on your vacuum it picked up your damn toy because you freaking threw it on the ground because it's a creepy giraffe well back on topic in order to help give Robert more of a lifelike quality, Eugene's mother, Minnie, decided to rummage around some storage bins in the house in order to find some clothes for the doll. Eventually, she came out of the storage room with a child's sailor suit. More specifically, it was Eugene's old sailor suit. And now, while no one knows for sure, some people do believe that this is the moment that ultimately doomed the Otto family. Giving Robert Eugene's clothes may have created an inseparable connection between the doll and the boy. Something like, oh my god, so, listen, it's Hollywood, right? They say based on a true story, it, it, I'm sure it's very fabricated, but oh, well, have yeah, you ever you watched the Annabelle franchise? Yeah, I've seen every episode. Uh, every like, so I don't think I've seen every one, but there's one where like, I don't know if it's origins or creation, but it's like after, it's like what started it, right? The doll and then there's like something in the house and like, it's I think writing. It's, creation. it's writing on a paper, like it's saying it's the dead daughter of this family. It's like, hey, let me in the doll or whatever. And it's yeah. just like, that's the inseparable connection, man. Don't do it. Stop. <laughs> Stop yeah. doing it. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> so, based on the inseparable connection between the doll and the boy, others believe this connection could have been pushed into existence because Eugene gave the doll his first name. Yeah, he gave him a part of him. So yeah, stop. It, there's a lot <laughs> Just, of like giving this doll things. Yeah, stop giving it stuff, dude. <laughs> you already gave it a home. That's all you need exactly. to give it. Stop That's all you got to do. Clothes. Don't give it a name. Don't treat it like it's alive. Can't do it, man. No matter what the reason may have been. We know that from this moment on, things would begin to go very wrong for the Autos. At first, everything seemed completely normal, and Robert would accompany Eugene everywhere he went, whether the boy was playing, eating, or sleeping. Robert would be there in tow. However, Robert would also be there whenever Eugene needed someone to talk to and share all his secrets with. Mm. And you know what? Let me just get on the topic. Like, So in every horror movie, like uh, where there's a kid, there's usually an imaginary friend, right? Like, uh, Like, what was that one? The boy, right? Which... Kind of seems like it probably took inspiration from this. Possibly, uh, although the second one kind of, the second yeah, and the first one kind of contradict it, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I think they're that's just a cash grab at that point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first one but did like, good, so we need a sequel. Like when I was a kid, my older sister had an imaginary friend, and me not wanting to feel left out because I was a middle child, I created one. But like even now, I was like, 
there's no one here. <laughs> like, I'm like six years old. I'm, like, I'm not talking to anyone, dude. I'm just making up whatever my sister's making up. And, you know, if I was a parent and my child I actually started talking to someone that wasn't there, I'd probably like, like, I'm probably calling a priest or an exorcist or something. Being <laughs> that like, would actually freak you out? Like, yeah, your kid having like, an imaginary friend? Because I don't know, man. Sometimes I feel like, and maybe I've seen too many horror movies, but like, when kids start talking in the movies to an imaginary friends, it's usually like some demon or spirit or ghost or something. You know, you know? maybe not, maybe not with, with the imaginary friend, but as soon as he comes to me with a drawing to put on the fridge and it's like him, his imaginary friend and us dead on the side. <laughs> with I'm like, X's okay. or like yeah. really dark circles for the I'm eyes. like, okay, all right, let's, <laughs> let's, let's clean this up right now. <laughs> the only quote unquote imaginary friend I ever had, which I think like every child who went in the car a lot had, was the little guy running along the side of the car and like jumping over everything? You never had that. I mean, I pictured myself doing that. I I never pictured oh, anyone like Naruto else. running like next to the car. No, like Mario <laughs> or something. Do you like? I didn't get into anime till like two years ago. Dude. Like, okay, no, I, I, okay, I'm not the only one here, by the way, because I've seen memes about it. But yeah, you imagine like a little dude just kind of like running and alongside the road, jumping must over be, the signs. Must be a, a northern New York thing. We couldn't all afford GI Joes, okay? I didn't even play with GI Joe. <laughs> I, I don't think GI Joe was before my time, too, dude. You're right, I, like 42. I'm, okay, well, you're, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're you're getting up there too now, Mister. <laughs> Wait, what year were you born? 94. Yeah, you're not even a Gen Z. You're a millennial like me. I'm dude. in my you 20s act- still. I can still stay in my 20s. Yeah, for now. It's coming, dude. <laughs> it's like the, the Twister meme. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> it's like 30 years old. Dude, one day you're just, your back starts hurting, dude, and you're just like, what'd I do? <laughs> well, hopefully not. I'm like, sure I, used to be, I used to be a belly sleeper, right? And then I turned like 27, and then I can't do that anymore because I'd start getting neck pain and stuff. Well, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, did you ever have an imaginary friend besides that weird hoppy skip dude? No, I did not, actually. What about your sister? I don't think so. Um, Sam? I don't think so. Hmm. Wait, did you have an imaginary friend? Because you, you tell this ghost story, right? Of like a That's not an imaginary theater. friend, man. <laughs> well, see, you tell this ghost story and you don't believe in ghosts, but like a puppet show at the foot of your bed when you're like, what, five? Yeah, I mean, it was probably just like, it's probably three in the morning. You know, the witching hour. Uh, it is the witching hour. Why is it called? Why is that the, I've just, always wondered, and I've never looked into it. Why is that the witching hour? I have no idea. We'll have to figure that out. Okay. Next podcast. But, yeah, no, I just, I don't know. It was like three in the morning. I was probably like half asleep. It's a child. You probably, probably had too many pixie sticks for bed, and I saw things moving, probably. Who knows? You know, too many pixie sticks. Want to con- want to convict your parents of SRA, dude? <laughs> <You're just> like, <laughs> who knows where the night's going to take us, dude? <laughs> things All get right. a little heated, dude. <laughs> All right. At first, this relationship appeared innocent enough to Minnie and Thomas, as they assumed it was just a case of a boy and his imaginary friend. However, this nonchalant approach towards the duo quickly became upended when Eugene began to display major shifts in his behavior. Eugene, who had previously been a quiet, reserved, and generous child, quickly became... I don't know a single generous child. They're all self. <laughs> hey, 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 my nephew's a sweetheart, man. I'll, I'll go and... Like, he, he's selfless enough to where he, like, he puts his little sister before him, and I'm like, wow, he's a better little brother than I was. Or older brother than I was. <laughs> that's cool. Because, he's a good uh, kid, man. I feel... That's great. But Almost. I know you. You're a selfish piece. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, he was a reserved <laughs> and generous child. And he quickly became violently possessive over the doll and exhibited aggressive behavior towards his parents. Oh, yeah. Calling the exorcist already. dude. (laughs) You know, this is what you'd have such a big bill for the exorcist because you'd be calling them all the time. And you know what? He would probably be like, oh, yeah, there's something definitely right. It's going to be like 10 installments. Like they would write you off. No, I think they would. They would. They would make a fuck. They would make a such a long bill being like, oh, I'm going to have to come back so many times. Like, yeah, he's definitely he's definitely got something. dude. All right. Well, uh, anyways, yeah, he displayed aggressive behavior towards his parents. This included outbursts of rage and screaming fits when his parents attempted to remove the doll from his possession. Unfortunately, as bad as that may have seemed, this was just the beginning of the Otto's woes. One night, soon after these changes in Eugene began to occur, Minnie was going through the normal routine of getting her son ready for bed. While she was getting him tucked in, she noticed that Eugene was talking to Robert in a hushed tone. As beforehand, this didn't really phase her, as it had become common practice by now. It was Eugene talking to his imaginary friend after all. After she made sure her son was comfortable, she said goodnight and closed the door. 
However, as she began to walk away from the bedroom, she heard a rough, gravelly voice actually respond to what her child was saying. Fearing that somebody had broken into the house, the panicked mother burst into her son's room as fast as possible. However, nobody was in the room except for Eugene and Robert. And Robert. And Robert. Gets super dramatic. Okay, at this point, I mean, at this point, come on. Like, call the exorcist. (laughs) Call somebody. Call the cop. Oh, well, no. Like, I saw The Conjuring, too. And, like, the... There's it the third one. It's like when the British police come and, like, they think the lady's crazy, but then, like, stuff starts moving in the house. And they're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, out of our, it's out of our pay grade. Maybe Robert is the reason why Florida has become what it's become. Maybe he is the curse of the state. Yeah, no. I think Florida's just been... <laughs> no offense to Florida, but, I mean, you always read, like... I mean, that's where people, like... <laughs> That's where the bath salt incident occurred and people thought zombies were, were real. Yeah, I mean, Florida's always up to something. Dude. It is. Um, don't be wrong. I have many fantastic memories there. But yes, Florida is always in the news. And unfortunately, Disney it, World is there. Disney World's great. It's just very expensive. And I know everything is these days. Though. You spend more time waiting in line. You must get the fast pass. I don't know. What are you doing? What are you doing in that situation? What would I do? Yeah. Uh, son, well, I, you, you hear freaking grab the doll on fire from... is what I would do. That Are doll would be out of sun on fire. What if it's your son? I'm not setting the sun, my son on fire. <laughs> but what if he do... what if he's Damien from the Omen, dude? Well, then then you call the exorcist. But I'm no, not like, jump... and then the exorcist is like, yeah, I just got a call from the bad kid. We got to we got to exterminate this kid. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the Catholic Church exterminates children. Hey, man, they do in the Omen. Dude. <laughs> so I'll slide a note in there being like. Possibly the son of Satan. <laughs> Just put a sticky note on top of his head. Question mark. Possibly possessed by, de- by a demon. All right. Well, anyways, uh, knowing full well that she heard another voice, Minnie asked Eugene who he was talking to. Ominously, her son responded, Robert. Unfortunately, this would not be the last time that this would happen, and occurrences would begin to happen, begin to happen more and more frequently until it became an almost nightly event. Okay, first of all, I love my sleep. This is the scariest part of all of this. I don't really care because this. I my honest opinion is this child is just kind of he's seeking attention. To be honest, he was a lonely child. You, you're gonna think like a six year old can make a gravelly voice, dude. I don't even <laughs> I don't think know, like I don't, like like like. Listen, when a, when a six year old tries to change their voice, I think you can kind of tell. Like, or maybe can you give me an eight. example of you trying to change your voice. Well, no, I'm saying, dude, your voice hasn't even fully developed at six. Dude. I, I probably sounded like, like, I probably sound like this. Like, so, you know what I'm saying, dude? Like, like I'm not going to like <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to make my voice. Deep. Like, I'm just saying, as a, as a mother or a parent, I think you can tell when you're like, if it was your child or maybe she was sleep deprived. I don't know. Maybe he was practicing ventriloquism at eight. At eight. He's, he's a prodigy. Maybe. Eugene's Burn him a, at the stake, dude. He's a witch. <laughs> Eugene's a smart person name. I feel Eugene's a smart person name. I do know two Eugenes. They're pretty smart. Well, were they prodigies? No? Okay. I don't know. You should ask them. (laughs) Uh, Anyways, as the encounters began to ramp up, they went from being creepy to downright terrifying. Mm. As Eugene became more and more unhinged, (laughs) so did the apparent actions of Robert. I don't know why that's funny. (laughs) Uh, I mean, calling calling a a child unhinged is always kind of funny, I think. (laughs) It sounded right when I wrote it. (laughs) Uh, many nights, Minnie would continuously be forced to respond to a commotion in her son's room and would find the room in complete disarray. Toys would be smashed, furniture would be flipped over, and Eugene's clothes and curtains would be torn apart. I need to know what type of furniture here. I mean, it's... Like, is this little boy flipping a couch? Because then that's not the little boy, dude. Ain't no way that little boy flipping a couch. I mean, they're rich. It's a mansion. And it's going to be really nice furniture. And we're talking the early 1900s. This is heavy furniture. Oh, yeah, dude. Nothing is child-proofed. <laughs> no, child-proofing is not, like, that's communism. <laughs> we don't do that here. <laughs> Socialism. Disgusting. <laughs> Toys would be smashed, furniture be flipped over, and Eugene's clothes and curtains would be torn apart. Almost every single time, Eugene would be found huddled under his covers, absolutely petrified. He would then go on to utter the now commonplace phrase, Robert did it. Bro, come on. This is like the boy, dude. Like, oh, my God. Come on, dude. Someone burn this doll. <laughs> I just don't get why they just don't kick it. It's a doll. It's like every well, Chucky no, you, movie, you gotta, just kick you gotta, the damn thing. You gotta burn it, dude. Well, yes, but do something to it. Don't just leave it. Or you do what Zach, no, not Zach Bagans, the Warrens did and put it in a little display case and then chain it with like crosses and holy water. Well, don't get ahead of yourself. We're gonna, we'll, we'll get to that. 
By now, Minnie, who was a woman of faith, began to fear that there was something supernatural haunting the family. No shit, obviously. <laughs> uh, and more specifically, she believed something was haunting her son. The voice that started off quiet and hushed could now be heard on the other side of the house screaming and yelling at Eugene. It appeared as if Robert, or whatever was possessing him, was becoming more powerful. For weeks this went on, that is until one faithful night when the entire situation came to a breaking point. Minnie and Thomas woke up to a blood-curdling scream coming from down the hallway. Realizing that the shriek was coming from their son's quarters, the couple jumped up out of bed and ran full speed towards Eugene's room. As they got closer and closer to the child's bedroom, the now all-too-familiar guttural voice was increasing in volume. By the time the couple got to the door, the groaning voice had become deafening. Without hesitation, Thomas and Minnie burst through the door into their son's bedroom. They're braver than I am. I don't think I would, uh, I'd be like, hold on a second. Let's assess the situation here before we go bursting down doors. I mean, we don't know what's in there. <laughs> so, um, I guess they're, they're a little braver than I would be. Maybe that's why I probably wouldn't be the best parent, but you know, I'm sorry. Self-preservation is a very real thing. <laughs> Uh, almost <clears throat> immediately upon entering, the voice subsided, and all was and all that could be heard was a child's terrified whimper. Mm. Inside, a queerly shaken Eugene was against the wall, across from his bread, bed, cowering underneath a bedsheet. All around him lay debris from torn apart toys, clothes, and even furniture. Almost mockingly, Robert sat atop Eugene's bed, dog in lap, staring at the parents. Interesting. <laughs> Wait, oh, the fake dog, right? Well, yes, that he didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't just have the family dog held hostage with like a knife to its throat. <laughs> That would be terrifying. That that actually would be like, damn, I might actually believe this had some merit. But uh, definitely not. Uh, so you know, I also like, so kind of like, so I think kids, dogs, cats, like, I really do think they can like sense stuff, like especially dogs and cats. They have more heightened senses than humans. And people will be like, oh, like your cats, there's mice in the wall or something or your dog, like it like. Like, when my dog would bark at an empty room, I'd be like, like, back in high school, I'd be like, okay, what's going on? What's in here? And then one time, like, I swear my house was haunted, bro. Because, like, my cats would be staring at something, like, in the closet before something would fall. And then, like, sure enough, like, 10, 20 seconds later, something would fall. And then the cat would, like, run and scurry away. I'm just like, I don't know, man. Like, burn the house, burn the doll, burn everything. Dude, just throw it all out. Start over. <laughs> I mean, probably the scariest thing I've ever experienced with like an like an animal possibly seeing something that I couldn't see was um, when we were leaving our like the last apartment we were in to move into the last house. Mm -hmm. We it was like a week before we were getting ready to leave, and Piper, who is not an aggressive dog, I've never seen her bar her teeth. I've never oh, seen no, the hair on her back. She's, she's attacked me many times, dude. Oh yes, definitely. You have all the bite marks. Of her. I made sure she bit you though, where your clothes hide it. But but um, anyways. It was like a week before we were moving. I'm just finishing up packing and stuff. And she is staring at the top corner of the kitchen. There's nothing there. Her teeth are barred. She's growling. The hair on her back is sticking straight up. And she was doing this for like a solid like 15 seconds. I've never seen her do it before or since. And all I could imagine, all I could think was, <clears throat> I'm really happy we're getting out of this house because there's something not okay here. So, yeah. Go stuff. I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you're just scared for no reason. Dude. <laughs> Finally realizing that it was indeed the doll that had been causing the family suffering, Minnie, in a fit of rage, snatched up the doll and its companion and proceeded to run towards the entrance of the attic. From there, she cast Eugene's best friend deep into storage and slammed the door shut. From here on out, Robert would be left to rot far away from the auto fam, except that probably didn't actually happen. Um, instead, a more, uh, a theory that is more widely believed, which I think this is actually more unsettling than that is, um, basically most people believe that yes, all this happened, but they actually put the doll up in the attic, which the attic is not like your normal, typical attic. It's actually that turret that you had mentioned when you were reading, mm -hmm. um, it's at the top of the house. It's a really pretty um, part of the house. It's got windows all around. It's a big turret. It looks like almost like a piece of a castle. Eugene supposedly put him up there, put you put Robert in a chair, and turned it into his own bedroom. In like there, Robert's he had bedroom. what was that? Like Robert's bedroom. Robert, yeah. Eugene mm. created a bedroom for Robert, and inside there there were toys and furniture and stuff. This was Robert's room. Mm -hmm. That is actually more widely believed that that's what happened. So for Eugene to put that much effort into this doll 
and insists that his doll has a bedroom. I think that's almost creepier than him just being thrown in the attic because oh, I, uh, think so. I think, you know, I mean, something's going on between him and that doll. <laughs> okay. I wasn't supposed to sound like that. No, but... I know. I know. I know. I know. It's just <laughs> crazy. No, you sickos, dude. You guys are all sick, dude. So, so yeah, Disgusting. I guess I'll let you, cho- you know, the viewers choose which they want to believe whether, you know, Robert had his own room and it was, he was pampered and stuff or if he was cast away. But I do think he was actually taken well, you know, well enough care of in that room. So yeah, um, Robert gets a bedroom. Is if a switch had been flicked, the haunted happenings that had been quite routine in Eugene's room ceased. Convenient. It's always convenient, dude. This kid's, <laughs> this kid's a psycho, dude. <laughs> <laughs> However, just because they stopped occurring in the child's sleeping quarters doesn't mean the spooky happenings in the auto household became non-existent. Legend says that Robert became increasingly irate during this time and proceeded to take out his anger while residing up in the attic. I mean, he had been cast away. Even if... I mean, this just sounds like the movie for the premise of the boy dude. I gotta Maybe it like, is. I gotta look in and see if it was like directly inspired. I mean, even if whichever story you believe, right? And again, I lean towards he was well taken care of and he was put in a room and it was nice and blah 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 blah. But he's still being pushed away from daily life in the uh, in the household. Although you know, even though yeah, Eugene supposedly keeps visiting him, um, it doesn't matter, you know he's kind of stuck in that room. He's not hanging out at the dinner table getting his, you know, bowl of porridge or whatever the hell they ate back then. Oh my god, dude. (laughs) It's like, just imagine serving food to this inanimate object, and it's just like, you try to take it away to just take it away, and then like the kid's like, he's not done yet! (laughs) (laughs) He's like pushing the spoon of like cereal into its mouth, and it's just like dripping all over the place. It's just dripping down, making a mess. (laughs) Oh, you made a mess, Robert. Let me me get that for you. (laughs) Okay. okay. <clears throat> Many times throughout the day, Robert's little feet could be heard pitter pattering around away as he ran all over the attic. That'd be creepy to hear a little pitter patter, dude. Yeah. Honestly. And additionally, <laughs> furniture could be heard scraping across the floor, and items would be found routinely broken wherever, whenever the autos or the autos waitstaff went up to the attic. And because of these strange occurrences, it almost became quite difficult for the autos to keep servants around the house. And this would remain the case for years to come. Imagine if that was your biggest, you know, issue in daily life to keep your servants around. I mean, they, they, don't get me started on that. But yeah, that would be. <laughs> I mean, my biggest issue would be like, what the fuck is going on, dude? <laughs> like, right, right, like, exactly. Like at this point, why is it still in your house? <laughs> and that's the thing. Like, you know, I've read so many reports of this, and they, Yes, there's conflicting ones, but it doesn't matter. Like either way, creepy stuff is happening. Why would you keep this thing around? I mean, obviously the the number. I mean, whether you believe in ghosts or not, right? Like whether this is like fabricated or not, it's like what what normal person wants this thing in their house? I don't know. I don't know. Clearly, this child is like you know, like I said, I don't really believe the the dolls possess. I think the kids possess. Something's wrong. Like whether it's but the psychological issue, I don't know, but this is not normal. I mean, I wish there was video evidence of, like, this pitter-pattering and, like, I would want to see video evidence of hearing the pitter-pattering and the scraping of the thing while the kid's next to me, you know? Like, while the kid's next to the camera. Right, right. So you know that he's And, like, the father's that. right there, right? Like, make sure everyone's present, but, you know, let's, let's hear it there. Eventually, as time progressed, Eugene would grow up into a well-educated and respected young man. Debatable. <laughs> Despite contending with a possessed doll for much of his childhood... He would go on to study the arts in both New York and Paris. It was here that he would meet his future wife, a concert pianist named Annette Parker. The high class power couple would eventually go on and get married in Paris in 1930. And that's the most normal thing <clears throat> this child has done. Upon completion of their respective studies, the newlyweds would go back to Eugene's newly inherited estate back in Key West and start their new lives together. Soon after, Eugene would, take, would turn the front room of the estate into a personal painting writing, writing studio and carry out his dream of becoming a a successful artist and writer. This ultimately led the estate to earn the moniker The Artist's House. I wish I could say this is where the story ends, and that everyone lived happily ever after, and I wish I could say Robert never bothered anybody again. Unfortunately, that is not this kind of story. (laughs) And for some reason, Eugene would go on to retrieve Robert from storage and bring him back into his life once again. See, (laughs) if he inherited this house, right... And this doll is still there. Like, 
why is it still there dude like i'm getting a- a- i'm getting agitated right here <laughs> i know well the thing is like so he inherited the house because his parents passed away yeah um, okay so if he's not in like so he's off in paris right getting married and stuff why do the parents keep the doll i i don't know i, I really don't i mean like honestly were there still cases of it pitter pattering around the house or did this that went go on away? for years like literally it supposedly never ceased ever it just continued and continued continued parents died although i think the mother died significantly further down the line than mm-hmm. the father did but if eugene's away i would be like i'd get rid of it when he got back he's like where's robert i bet oh, the darndest thing happened this guy broke in stole robert we're lucky to be alive <laughs> you know it was me or the doll he'd probably still hate his mother he'd be like it should have been you <laughs> but, but you know that's the story i'd give and then and meanwhile he had actually been using a bonfire you know next to the pool uh, yeah, I don't know. This is this is kind of silly, but whatever. This is this is what's supposed to be. This Rich people are weird, dude. my friend. I don't know. They're all eccentric. Everyone in here is quite eccentric. I don't know. Nobody quite knows why he did it. Optimistic people tend to lean towards the notion that he wanted to keep a better eye on the doll and ensure that it would never hurt or scare anybody again. Yeah, because why why keep it locked away and so it doesn't hurt anybody? Bring it near people. <laughs> and hope it doesn't hurt anybody. <laughs> Others believe that the doll may have possessed or threatened Eugene. No matter what the case may be, he the fact of the matter is, Robert was once again free to torment the Otto's estate. Only this time, it would focus his hatred on Annette. Well, yeah, because now he's got a wife. I don't know how he scored Yo, a wife. Maybe, maybe he did <laughs> possess that child, dude, and maybe, maybe the child just uh, did its bidding, you know? For anybody who's looking for love, by the way, this should serve as quite an optimistic, you know, story. Because if this man who grew up being absolutely obsessed with a doll to the point where he would lash out and hurt people or or threaten to hurt people can get married to a concert pianist and, you know, be this power couple and stuff, then Mm -hmm. you can do it. So this should be inspirational to you. What kind of museum is this doll in, by the way? uh 40 smartello museum it's like a old military yeah, but like, installation but like what so it's a what is there just the town's history key west history you know like okay there's gonna be a lot of cute like i mentioned a lot of cuban art a lot of other different kinds of I'm and a haunted that, doll that's the focal point is you know there's a lot of cuban influences in florida so i'd imagine the majority of it is that probably mm-hmm. it's a popular one though i mean the main reason why it's popular is because of robert but, but still, there's other things there. It actually is like a pretty cool museum. The trouble would all begin to bubble up again when Eugene decided to put Robert in the front window of the turret room. This was the nickname for his studio. Robert would serve as a mascot-like figure for the house, and at first, all seemed well. That was until, however, Annette voiced her disapproval of placing such an ugly and unsettling item in such a public place. Sensing that this was causing friction between himself and his wife, Eugene decided to place Robert back in storage. Unfortunately, Robert didn't like that idea very much. So yeah, the doll is very jealous of his wife. She he's pissed that she's telling Eugene basically what I mean, if I was Robert, what I'd be hearing is it's either, you know, me or your doll. <laughs> and Eugene, being smart, decided, yes, let's put the doll let's put the doll away. You know, I should be grateful I even have a wife after, you know, all this stuff. <laughs> so anyway, it's, um, my wife left. <laughs> my wife left me, but uh, I got you, Robert. <laughs> we used to got you, Robert. <laughs> uh, according to Annette, Robert would go on to haunt her in her dreams and intimidate her by following her around the house. Apparently, she believed that she saw him peeking around the corner. You know, for the corner of her Yo, eye. Let, let me t- let me find out. Robert was a peeping tom, dude. <laughs> Probably. If this is the horror movie, there'd be like. You know, the shower oh, scene yeah, 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 where, yeah, like, yeah. it's all foggy, it's the glass, and you see, like, this Yo, three foot should... tall silhouette come up to the thing and put its hands against the glass. Maybe we should watch these UK Robert the Doll movies. Maybe that's in there. <laughs> we should have watched them before this. <laughs> I kind of want to watch them now. I'm down to watch six movies of Robert the Doll. <laughs> when I come visit you, we'll Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll find them, dude. We'll find them. We'll so according that. to Annette, Robert would go on to haunt her in her dreams and intimidate her by following her around the house. Other accounts also suggest that Robert even <clears> came <throat> to Eugene in his dreams and threatened to hurt Annette. Mm-hmm. No matter the reason, Robert was ultimately placed back in his chair in front of the window where he would remain for many moons to come. As time progressed, 
People within the neighborhood would begin to report all kinds of supernatural occurrences as they passed by Robert's window. Some would simply report an overall feeling of unease, while others would claim to have seen Robert actually moving from window to window. School children at a nearby bus stop would further add to the lore by claiming that they would frequently see Robert waving at them from his window. As a result of these accusations, Robert became a local legend in the area. Okay, I'm sorry, like, if I'm a child and I'm at the school bus stop or whatever, and I see there's this doll in the window, stories are gonna come about, especially one that looks like that. You know, they're gonna come about, and it's gonna be like, yeah, that doll is haunted, see? Like, yesterday he was in the other window, but he's here now, you know? it's, it's I mean, what if it's the homeowner just moving it, you know? Like, honestly. Well, I mean, Eugene was quite, you know, infatuated with Robert, so... He'd be like, no, no, you saw, you looked at this I mean, window like all day. I mean, it's like you, like, like, it's like, what if you had that skeleton and that dog? Honestly, great. It's like, it's like Robert and his dog. But like, what if you just put it in the window, Ooh. right? And then one day it's in a different window. Some kid walking by is like, <gasps> it moved. Tomorrow's me crawling on a ceiling. Exactly, dude. <laughs> New, uh, spoiler alert, that is actually Robert, full grown, mm. and mm. his dog. They've seen better days. <laughs> totally normal. <laughs> Years later, Annette and Robert would sadly lose Eugene when the successful painter would pass away in 1974 at the age of 73. Soon after that, Eugene's widow would move away from the lavish Florida mansion and into another home in Middlesex, Massachusetts. Woo, all, of her, Massachusetts. all of her and Eugene's belongings were moved with her, except for Robert. Congratulations, you are the only smart one in this entire story. You said, screw that doll, it's not my problem, I'm out, bye. So, and that is it's the, the only smartest person it. in this entire story. Salute to you, Annette. Uh, the home was then sold to a woman named Myrtle Reuter, who clearly was not deterred by the weird stories that must have been going around at the time. And there were plenty of stories going around. This wasn't like a secret. People had long been saying something was wrong with the doll. Upon moving into her new home, Robert was still present in his window and eventually became somewhat of a buddy to Myrtle. It was even said that he would tag along with her to her other residence on Von Fister Street, which was a few blocks away from the auto state. I actually looked at Google Maps. It's like literally maybe uh, half a mile away. So whoever this Myrtle Reuter is, she's got some big bucks if she can afford two, you know, homes in Key West. It's a very expensive area. It's very pretty. Hey, too. man. Some people have that kind of money. I wish I was one of them. <laughs> uh, according to Reuter. Subscribe to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, subscribe to the podcast so I can afford to buy the auto's estate. And then I'll start a vlogging series where I talk about Robert all day. That sounds like torture. I would never that. does sound that. awful. <laughs> According to Reuter, her time with Robert started off rather mundane and nothing noteworthy really happened. However, as she spent more and more time around the doll, she began to notice concerning patterns begin to form around Robert. Specifically, she noted that the toy would move away from where she left him while cleaning, and that she would also frequently hear small footsteps around the house at night. The pitter-patter is the back. Pit, the pitter-patter of doll feet going across a wooden floor. I know you love feet, dude. <laughs> my feet fiend uh even her guests reported that robert would make them feel uncomfortable some of them even reported that the figure's facial expression would change if they said something negative about it oh it's just so like he, annabelle dude you can hear don't say anything bad about robert and also we're actually gonna we'll get into that more later but you're not supposed to say anything bad about robert otherwise uh things might not go very well for you Oh, yeah, no, I want to get into that right now, because some of the stuff I was reading about... <laughs> Let me get oh, into no, that's this in here. Quick. That's in here. Promise you, we'll get to it. I know, I just want to say, it, it was so ridiculous, though, because it's like, one of them was divorce. It's like... <laughs> yeah, that's the ultimate like, scapegoat well, right there. <laughs> it's not my fault we got divorced. It's not my fault <laughs> my wife left me. It's that damn doll. <laughs> uh... <laughs> it always is, dude. <laughs> Eventually, Myrtle began to feel that this wasn't all just happening inside of her imagination. This prompted her to get in touch with Annette and inquire about the creepy instances that had been surrounding the doll. Annette gladly obliged and told the new homeowner all about the history of Robert. She must have been, like, so proud. Been like, yeah, yeah this isn't my problem anymore. This is yours. You're a dumbass for even buying the, the doll. So, I, I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I mean, at the same time, like... I know in New Orleans, right? Like real estate will list property if it's haunted. Like it literally will yeah, put a sign haunted. that says haunted or not haunted. It's like, maybe you should do that. I mean, whether or not you believe in it, right? But maybe, maybe say something. Like, cause I know I would never want 
to be a used homeowner because I would have some kind of like, like, listen, one, I probably not ever going to be able to afford it. So that's another thing. But I would not want to be someplace where like some shady stuff happened in the past. See, I think shadier stuff's going to happen in an apartment than it's going to happen in a house. I mean, maybe, but at the same time, I can move apartments. That's true. That is true. It's a lot easier to move an apartment than it is a house. After Annette talked to Myrtle about all the strange occurrences that happened on Robert, Myrtle decided that it would probably be best if she just donated him to the Fort East Martell Museum. Okay, that's the second smart thing to do in this. Mm -hmm. Get it out of the house. Moving away was the best one, and getting rid of that damn doll was the second one. And to this very day, at the museum, museum staff still report all kinds of anomalies that are affiliated with Robert. This includes hearing footsteps. I like to call it pitter patter. Pitter patter. <laughs> disembodied voices, the doll being out of place in its case, and claims of Robert changing his facial expressions. By the way, I saw a picture of it. I don't know. I couldn't really see a facial expression. <laughs> I don't know if it has much. Of a, I mean, it has eyes. Yeah. Like, additionally, <laughs> there have also been downright deadly occurrences that have become associated with the doll. But at the same time, like, all right, let's just get into it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know you've been waiting for this. It's, here it is. Both staff and visitors have encountered the toy, have experienced all kinds of misery, including but not limited to relationship breakdowns, divorce, instances of psychosis, development of, development of rare cancers and other diseases, been involved in car accidents, lost their jobs, experienced paranormal activity at home and in their dreams, and even died on occasion. It I is so Florida. There's lots of old people. Not only that, <laughs> literally everything gives you cancer nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of a fact. I mean, I need to see data on how soon after the encounter with a doll these occurred. Like, right? Like, is it three months later? It's like you got in a car accident. You're like, that damn doll. <laughs> like six years later, you get a divorce. It's like, it's not me. It was Robert. It's the doll. <laughs> Robert did it. Or Robert, like, oh, like a day after the doll, it's like divorce. It's, just it's like, not my fault I cheated on you. Robert made me do it. Like, I'm saying. I don't know. Robert gave me, I don't know. you know, stage four, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Overnight. I don't want to say. That's how it happens. I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, can't. Cancer well, well, well. kind of freaks me out. So I don't, oh, I, don't I mean, it, it freaks me out. That. It, fre it freaks me out, too. I'll knock on wood right here. But I mean, it's, it's probably just, not real wood that you're knocking on. It's, it's everywhere, bro. giving you cancer. It's everywhere, dude. Everything does, dude. Everything you buy nowadays has that Prop 65 California thing that says, hey, dust you're breathing in is going to give you cancer. Dude. Yeah, well, it's, anyway, it's unavoidable that, now. It is. It's like, listen, like there's forever chemicals in our water. It's just like it's everywhere. I'm sorry to be a Debbie Downer, but it's everywhere. It's a podcast. You can't it can't all be high as you know. I, I mean, I'd rather have all the lows than all the <laughs> Now, while all of these events are more likely just to be a coincidence, some people do believe that there truly is such a thing as Robert the Doll's curse, just like the curse of the mummy, right? Or Annabelle's curse. So many people believe it, in fact, that a cork board next to Robert's display cabinet is filled with over thousands of letters of people asking for his forgiveness and after supposedly offending him. And more keep being added every year. So apparently so wait, when you... Oh, is ahead. it only if you like offend him in person or if you offend him on a podcast? <laughs> I don't know. You should say something really bad. And then no, we'll I mean, we kind of like both have been like clowning on this. So, like... <laughs> um, well, so it's funny you say that, actually. So before this, I wanted some, you know, current events to talk about with Robert. I was going through a Reddit, so, you know, a subreddit, which clearly is all fact. You know, everything on there. Is oh, everything be on Reddit is true. Yeah, I don't even you don't need to fact check this. I promise you, it's just it's clearly real. Anything on Reddit's real. Um, you know, there was people going back and forth about saying, you know, first of all, like, when you take a picture of Robert or whatever, mm -hmm. you're supposed to ask him permission. Yes, you need to ask this doll permission. Can I take your picture, Robert? And you take a picture. Man, if you don't, he's really into this. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't do it, and you come off lucky, your photo will be blurry and whatever. If you come off unlucky, you die of a car accident. Dude, um, let me find out the museum is behind it and just like <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe that's how they push like, it. Like they're so into the conspiracy or the story that they're like actively murdering people. <laughs> It may be they have like a, oh, they just have a like hit a, squad, a hit squad who brings like a green screen with them and they just green screen the body with like Robert. <laughs> so, oh no, like I'm saying like they're actually murdering these people. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Robert, uh, 
yeah, so there's all these things you're supposed to, you know, get forgiveness where but anyway, I was going through a subreddit and someone was like breaking down with their like, I don't think that uh Robert or sorry, they think that like, Robert is like prox- his attack is proximity based. <laughs> They're talking about it like it's an RPG or something. Um if you but, say within a certain amount of radius, then like you're screwed. Right, exactly. So there was like a breakdown and they tried to break it down in the distance and stuff like that. Hey, so. man. Yeah, he's he's like a NPC that has a a set a set range, dude. We're what we're what like you know. Hopefully, we're safe. thousand miles, twelve hundred miles away. Yeah. So, but if someone listens to the podcast in Key West, Florida, maybe that's uh, by proxy. They're just gonna play it on a loop <laughs> next mm-hmm. to his case. So after all these years, what exactly was possessing Robert the doll? Anyways, there is one theory that has persisted throughout the years. According to some, Thomas Otto, Eugene's father, may have committed some kind of wrongdoing towards a staff member while they worked at his estate. The victim, who was apparently a young Bahamian woman, was well-versed in the practice of voodoo. And in order to get back at Thomas, she may have conjured up an evil spirit and have given it permission to occupy, at the time, newly acquired doll. Isn't that a plot twist? It, you know, again, like, I put this at the end just because not everyone believes this to be true. You know, back it also, on some level, probably isn't very appropriate to just assume that people were practicing voodoo back then. Mm. So, I think a lot of people, you know, this is just like a a convenient excuse as to why Robert the doll would be possessed. I personally, you know, putting on my tinfoil hat, which I need to make, I need to make a tinfoil hat for this. True, <laughs> you know, I think that. uh the doll them giving him the clothes from eugene and giving robert robert eugene's first name that would have been what actually gave the doll life you know maybe there was a ghost in the estate it's a very old estate it's in you know key west i don't really know the history of key west but you know the fort that this is in technically it was a union fort however even though the fort was a union fort the vast majority of people who lived in the Key West area sided with the Confederacy. That's why it actually is quite amazing that no conflict ever broke out because this Union fort was basically smack dab in the middle of Confederate territory. Hmm. But maybe that's why they didn't do it, though, because, like, you know, if we pick a fight, there's a lot more of them than there are us. Maybe we should just kind of be like, you know, put our little political sign out, be like, this this uh, fort supports the Union and kind of weird at that, not answer the door to anybody who wants to come and try to change their minds. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it, I'm sure there was a lot of not nice things being said back then in this oh, area. Probably. So, while we can't answer definitively whether or not Robert the Doll is actually haunted, one thing is for sure. Thomas Otto got way more than he bargained for when he purchased the toy on that fateful day in Germany. Today... Robert is both remembered and feared by horror junkies all across the globe, and thousands of people flock to his display case in Key West, Florida every year. He truly has become a larger-than-life figure, despite his meager three-foot stature. Another insult. (laughs) When the United States military first built Fort East Martello back in 1860, they did so with the expectation that they would be protecting the soldiers inside of the fortress from an invading army. However, in a strange twist of fate, it would appear that the fort is now being used to do the exact opposite. It's being used to protect the outside world from Robert the Doll. Oh, good little twist on the end right there. So that's the story of Robert the Doll. He, uh, he's a little asshole, to be quite honest. Thanks again for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed your time here on the You Go First podcast. You can find us either on YouTube or your favorite audio-only streaming platform. Find us on Spotify, Apple Music, etc. If you liked what you heard today, we'd love for you to give us a big old thumbs up, a pot as a review, and if you really liked us, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. It helps us out big time and keeps us motivated. Additionally, if you just want to reach out to us with a question or idea for us to cover, please feel free to do so at yougofirst.tv at gmail.com. If you'd like to see, uh, if you'd like to see our faces, you can check us out on YouTube at yougofirstpod. And if you just simply want to watch spooky games, you can also check us out on our horror channel, You Go First Gaming. Um, To give you a little spoiler, we'll be doing the uh, the Dietlov Pass for the next episode. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite subjects. It's a story I think everybody kind of has an opinion about. And that's the best part about that story is there are so many Mm -hmm. different theories. And 
I would say there's there's three really solid theories, or it's actually sorry, there's four solid theories. Two of them are realistic, but the other two are ones that. And there's only one right answer. And it's aliens. Be. It's aliens. From all of us here at You Go First, and from my precious little baby Lacey, we wave goodbye. See you later. Stay spooky, everyone. <laughs>